Hi, I'm John Hammer. I'm an artist from Claremore, Oklahoma. Uh, I've been doing art for about 10 years now. Uh, it used to be pretty neat whenever I could say I've only been doing it for a year. Um, people would go, wow, and now it's like, holy crap, I've been doing it for 10 years. So anyway, not quite as unique as it used to be. I uh, started out as a graphic designer. Always been doing art my whole life. <coughs> always enjoyed art, always appreciated art. I uh, knew I was gonna do something with art when I was younger, just didn't know what it was. I didn't understand what commercial art and graphic design were um, until I discovered those in high school and college and went on to spend about 25 years plus doing that, always thinking about doing the fine art someday, uh, always dreaming about it and going to museums and galleries and looking at art and collecting it, and buying it, all that kind of stuff and thinking someday it's gonna be me. And then one day that day finally came, uh, my wife and my grandkids were painting outside on the deck of our house and they said, come join us. And I was a little hesitant. And then I said, oh, what the heck? Picked up a paintbrush, painted some flowers and went, wow, this was fun. This was neat. Uh, I can't believe I haven't been doing this all along. Next thing you know, I'm, I'm just painting everything and anything I can think of. Uh, just keep painting and keep painting. Never really have taken any lessons other than art school in high school, you know, art class in high school and stuff. Uh, so familiar with some of the processes, but not really taught as far as how to layer or how to mix or how to do any of that. Um, always understood color through graphic design and always had an eye for it. Plus learning, you know, the uh, primary and secondary colors and complementary colors in school, art class in high school and stuff. So it wasn't foreign to me when I started doing art. Um, and a lot of people ask me like, how do you come up with your colors? And I have to say, there's no secret to it. They're all straight out of the tube. So that's kind of, I don't know if it's laziness or just um, no, you know, no desire to try to emulate what nature is. Because when I started painting and started doing art, the idea was that I, in my mind, I was gonna be this realist and I could paint beautiful, realistic pictures. And after a little bit of struggle with that, I realized quickly that you either can do it or you can't do it. There is no in between. It either looks like a photograph or it doesn't. And after struggling, trying to make things look as real as I possibly could, I finally said, the heck with it. Let me just throw some color in here and see what happens. You know, like, you know, it's supposed to be blue, but what if it's green? What if it's this? What if it's that? It, without thinking about or caring about whether it made sense or was supposed to be there or looked like that. So the idea was just kind of when I started painting like that, it was just, let's try this, let's see that. And so it kind of worked into, like if you see the painting behind me, he has blue and purple and green in his face, but I'm trying to create a, oh, a tonal value to some degree, more than a representation of skin color. But when you think about it, we all have all of those colors and everything in our skin and in our lives and everything else. We're not, there are no straight colors of this and that. Everything's mixed of all kinds of colors. Um, so that's when you come into something like this, that it's, you know, representational of what really is there. You just don't see it. <clears throat> and so when I paint a portrait, things like that, what I found, as long as I keep the eyes normal looking, everything else can be as weird as it possibly can. But if I made his eyes weird, then he would look weird. So it's weird how we see the human face and the, the person through their eyes. Um, and so when you look at that, his face can be all the different colors of the spectrum, but if his eyes are realistic and they're looking back at you, you're connected to it and it comes across normal. It comes across like, okay, yeah, I can see that's Will Rogers. Uh, but yeah, if I gave him like yellow eyes or something, all of a sudden he's not even human. He turns into something else. So it's kind of a weird thing that I found through doing this that as long as I keep the eyes there, <clears throat> somewhat normal, people can accept just about anything else from it. So 
A couple of years ago, I was asked by the city of Claremore to paint a mural downtown. Uh, the idea was to spruce it up and liven up some of the alleyways and make them more usable. And the one we chose and one we were looking at, the idea was to, to uh, create a space to where you could hold events, you could have a band in the alleyway, you could have a flea market, things like that, just to kind of clean it up and make it a little more presentable and friendly and pedestrian friendly. Um, and the idea, I believe, still is to continue that down the road. We all put everything on hiatus, obviously, from uh, COVID and, and the last couple of years of that. So this was before that and we were headed in that direction, but they wanted to create at least one mural down there to kind of give everybody an idea how this could look and how it could happen. And I was given free reign on do whatever you want, but I just thought I really needed to do something that highlighted the city of Claremore. Um, we have other murals downtown with other things, but I really wanted Will Rogers to be prevalent and I wanted Stuart Russo to be prevalent. I think they were both pioneers in their time, and so it's actually called uh, Travelers of Both Time and Space. And I think it just totally, because they're relevant today, they're relevant back then, and they've traveled through time and space with their message and with their images and all that. So uh, <clears throat> I thought it was appropriate that those two guys were included in this mural. Um, because I think it's pretty cool, A, that we have an astronaut from Claremore, and B, that Will Rogers is from this area. You know, he may not necessarily be from right here, just up the street, but this is his area. This is where he grew up. This is, you know, kind of what shaped him and made him who he is, this land and this people and, you know, everything around here. So I thought it was important that he was a part of it. Um, and I was looking for images that, you know, I always look at images like what shows their personality, what shows their spirit, what shows, you know, who they are. Uh, you can see a lot of pictures of people, but there are certain pictures and certain things that kind of lighten up and, you know, allow you to see who they really are or their personality. And I thought the one in the alleyway kind of almost looks a little mischievous, um, which I believe Will was. And so it just kind of gives you that little bit of, he's got kind of a little smirk on his face and, and uh, he has his cowboy hat on. And I just thought that really exemplified, you know, one of his personalities. And so he's on the uh, wall there. And then of course we incorporated Route 66 uh, in it as, as well, because it's amazing that we are on that route and as part of the travelers of time and space that come through Claremore. You know, we're all travelers of time and space. So that was the idea behind the mural. And so it, it was done for the city of Claremore and hopefully we will see many more to come down the alleyways and around town. So, so my art has started to evolve. Um, when I first started out, the idea was to paint things around me, things familiar to me, things that I liked. Uh, obviously, Will Rogers was one of those being from Claremore at this point in my life. I'm uh, not originally from here, but been here long enough to where this is my hometown at this point. And this is where I'll spend, you know, my life. And Will Rogers being a big part of that, um, I've always enjoyed his humor, uh, believe that his, his thoughts and a lot of the things he has said have traveled throughout time and still are relevant today. And so one of the reasons I did choose him to paint, I've painted him a couple of times, not only do I feel like he's local, you know, as same as me, but I think he's relevant and I'd like to make him relevant even more today. And so when I paint a painting like this that has more pop art colors and more modernist takes to it, what I hope to see is that a younger generation will react to it and go, oh wow, okay, he fits in with my time too. You know, take him out of the history and bring it back into the present. So that was kind of the idea of painting him in this style and bringing him up to, up to now so that everyone can enjoy him in this day. So, <clears throat> but things have evolved quite a bit in my art. So I was doing more pop reference uh, 
items and doing a lot more of that kind of stuff at the beginning, painting just about everything I liked and I could think of. And I've kind of put a lot of that aside and now I'm painting more, oh, I've got a series called Tattered, um, Tattered Aesthetics and it's more about things that are kind of forgotten or used and, and put aside, um, like an old car in a field, an old tractor in a field, um, you know, old wrench that somebody has used their whole life and fixed things and built things and made things and then it just gets tossed into a toolbox somewhere or into a bin and it gets sold at the garage sale or whatever. And the idea that there's a history there with these objects and these things that somehow I'd like to make more important or bring to the light and, and allow people to experience in a new way. So it may just be a wrench, but it's a wrench with history and there's fingerprints and there's, you know, maybe blood and guts and it's just, you know, it's somebody's wrench um, that built things. And so those kind of things are sort of what I'm working on now. I'm um, doing more and more in that line of the tattered aesthetics. I've got one of an old pump jack out in the field. Um, old buildings that have been abandoned that used to be somebody's business, property, whatever, that served a purpose and somehow for some reason they've been kind of left behind. So I'm kind of trying to give uh, light to things like that instead of to like pop culture icons that get way more attention than they deserve these days. So uh, I've kind of went in that direction with that. And then I'm also doing more of a uh, Cubist series. I sat down one day and decided I just want to draw for the sake of drawing. Doesn't matter what it looks like, doesn't matter what the outcome is. And I just started doodling and I love portraits and I just ended up drawing some funky weird faces and stuff. And so I call that Peculiar Portrayals and I've continued that series. I've got a series of cowboys that I'm working on right now. And so I just sit down and start with sketches and start sketching out uh, faces out of ob objects or, you know, geometric shapes. <clears throat> and then from there, I take that sketch and I refine it a little bit more, a little bigger. And then I take that to the canvas and I paint with acrylics. I've always painted with acrylics. Um, part of the reason is I've always I've heard oils are a lot of fun to paint with, but I didn't want the cleanup with all the solvents and chemicals and stuff like that going on. I've seen people painting where they're wearing gloves and a mask and all that, and it just doesn't seem fun to me. So uh, the idea of using a water-based product appealed to me, and acrylics fit that mark. So uh, that's primarily what I paint in is acrylics. Um, I picked up uh, Liquitex is the main, they're the ones that kind of uh, uh, created the acrylic paint. Um, I picked my brushes because they were cool looking, but they turned out to be really great brushes. Um, and so yeah, so I, I take them up to the canvas uh, and paint them, and, and same with the tattered aesthetics, all that's acrylics and stuff too. And with that series, I actually do a lot of scraping on the canvas and a lot of putting paint on and then removing it and building up layers upon layers of paint and just trying to emulate the products that are in the painting itself and almost give the painting a abandoned and abused feel so that it's the painting fits in with what the subject matter is. So those are the things I'm kind of working on now. I'm also trying to focus a little farther into different types, like I've been doing a lot more screen printing, um, linoleum cut printmaking. Um, I took a class out at RSU printmaking, did some etching, stuff like that. I want to do a little more of that, um, but I really want to head into some uh, sculptural items. So I've got a couple of projects coming up this year that I think I'll be able to incorporate that into and work that into and maybe some metal sculptures of some sort either with the peculiar portrayal type faces and the funkiness, maybe very abstract stuff. Um, so I'm really looking forward to doing that and who knows what I'll be doing five years from now. 